So this is a new day 18 video. I deleted the old one because it was too awkward. Don't worry, you weren't missing anything. In the original challenge, I decluttered my pantry on day 18 and got rid of a bunch of pandemic era food that I was never going to eat. Unfortunately, I either forgot to film the act or I deleted the footage too soon and I didn't have a real video for that day. So I just made a video using a still photo of my pantry and then a short video of me getting rid of an old cash bag from my office. The sad video got lots of views but no likes, so I thought, yeah, that video was objectively lame. So here I am about four months out from completing the challenge myself and I'm getting rid of 18 items for the new improved day 18 video. I learned some interesting things along the way. First of all, I learned that it is hard to jump in on a random day and just get rid of 18 items. During the challenge itself, it was pretty easy. I had the momentum of the prior 17 days behind me. I was in a groove and it was a breeze. So that means if you want to keep decluttering after the challenge ends, then you should give yourself a way to gently keep going, even if it's just getting rid of one thing every day or two. Second of all, I learned that it's harder to get rid of a bunch of stuff when you just feel like you're working on your own and there's no one to commiserate with. During the active challenge, while there are a bunch of other people working alongside you, you get to share and laugh and get a lot of positive feedback and encouragement. In a nutshell, even when you finish the challenge, keep going, even if it's just small steps, and make sure to share your progress with an accountability buddy. And now here are the 18 items that I decluttered for my new and improved day 18. First, this gigantic antique spinal neuropathy folio from Canada Memorial Chiropractic College. It's super cool and has some beautiful old timey colored prints inside of it. I always thought I could sell it on eBay someday because surely someone would want this piece of history. Well, I've listed it on eBay a number of times over the years, and nobody ever wants it. Yeah, it's cool, but it's also a weird size. It's 11 inches by 13 inches, which is too tall for most bookshelves, and it's plastic comb bound, which doesn't look nice anyway if you're just trying to show off your antique print books. So I thought, fine, I'll keep it, and maybe I'll hang and frame some of these cool prints myself one day. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, it might be cool, theoretically. But realistically, I'm never going to hang these prints. In just the few months since I've completed the challenge, I've already hung different pieces of art on my wall. If you really want to hang some art, you're going to hang it. If you just keep it in your closet for years, thinking maybe someday, then you're probably not that into the art. Am I right? Next, I'm getting rid of this beloved dictionary. I really love old-fashioned dictionaries. I spent so much time as a kid just flipping through the dictionary. I love the little pictures inside and learning about all the weird word origins and all that. But as an adult, when is the last time I sat down and flipped through this dictionary? I only ever flip through it for a few minutes when it's time to box it up for a move or when I'm looking through books thinking about what I should get rid of. I'm never going to sit around reading the dictionary. I'm just not. And if I ever get super sentimental for a big dictionary, guess what? There's this thing called the library and they are all over the place and all of them have a big dictionary. So. Bye bye giant dictionary. Three unused audio cassette tapes. I don't even have a recorder or a player anymore, so time to let these go. A little stack of really old long envelopes that I found in my dad's desk. Since I do a ton of mailing, I thought that for sure I could use these envelopes for something. I often need odd sized envelopes but I never need this odd sized envelope. I'm not even sure what they used to mail in the old days that required these. 
but they're not useful anymore. My dad probably kept them in his desk drawer for 40 plus years, and I don't need to keep them in mine for 40 more. I won't even live that long. Also found a specialized watch holder wrist thing for a watchy thingy that I would never wear on my wrist because I wear a smart watch all the time. So, and here's the old testimonials binder that I used to keep in the waiting room at the office. I don't even have a waiting room anymore and all of my testimonials are online now. So I'm gonna let this thing go. And here is a migraine pain relieving gadget that one of my patients swears by. I like to try things out that people rave about so that I know what it's like, but I don't get migraines anymore, thankfully. And also I'm scared of trying to use this thing because I'm afraid of exploding an eardrum. So I think I'm just going to give it to that patient who loves it. Okay, and here is something called a grounding mat that I bought, again, to try out something that a patient asked about. Um, I probably shouldn't have bought it because I think it's pretty useless for my situation and it probably is useless, period. I'm actually too embarrassed to even put it on the Buy Nothing group, so I think I'm going to just have to pitch it in shame. Random antique print that someone gave me like 10 years ago, which I thought I would hang up, but I never did, and I never will. Tiny box of Nag Champa cone incense that someone was throwing away and that I thought was perfectly good. I don't use much incense anymore because my eyes are too sensitive. Um, I can light it for like one minute and then I have to put it out. Also, even when I do use incense, I never use cone incense. I'm never going to use this incense. Here is a donut baking pan that I bought about 15 years ago because it was like $2 in the clearance bin. And I have never used it once. I don't bake donuts. My kid doesn't bake donuts. It's time to let it go. And here are some smelly pieces of ancient broken dishes from a dirty little beach called Tepco Beach. It was the dumping site of a ceramics factory decades ago. And so, at low tide, collectors go out there and try to dig up shards of trash cups and plates from the old Tepco factory. I thought it sounded cool, and I liked this piece. Half a plate, and a little cup handle, and this wedge that looks to me like a slice of pizza. But even though these plates came home with me years ago, they still smell bad. So I left them in a drawer until I could think of what to do with them. I'm not going to do anything with them. I need to let them go. And here is a set of binoculars, totally useless. I always imagined that I would get to use them to witness some crazy urban crime in a building across the street or something. But guess what? A couple of weeks ago, there was some police action and commotion happening down on the street late at night. So I got out of bed all excited like, oh boy, I get to use those binoculars finally. So I stumbled around in the dark trying to find them, tripped over something, stubbed my toe, and then when I finally got to the windows with my binoculars, it took forever to get them focused. And then when I got them focused, I still couldn't see crap and then ended up going back to using my phone with the zoom lens on the phone camera, which was just as good as the stupid binoculars. And also, I still couldn't get a good view of the action. So I don't need these stupid binoculars. And here is the stupid beard trimmer that I mentioned in another video, but that I couldn't find. So I found it, and I'm getting rid of it. Survival Medicine Handbook. I ordered this book years ago when I worried that maybe the apocalypse would really happen. And how would I make a living? Maybe I should brush up on survival medicine and be like a wandering healer. Well, I don't think I even made it past chapter one because they started talking about body lice and parasites and stuff like that. And I was like, body lice? Man, I'm not cut out for the apocalypse. Who am I kidding? I need to let this book go and hope for a speedy death if the apocalypse happens. And here are some cookbooks that I'm getting rid of. First of all, I'm a crappy cook. But even when I do look up recipes, I never ever go to these books. 
I always go to my phone and look up recipes. And if not my phone, then I go to my computer and I print out a recipe from the internet. I don't need these. Okay, and that's my stuff for revised day 18. For anyone who watched the original dud video, sorry about that.